Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the inverse of an interesting function. We have f of x equals e to the power x divided by x. And we're going to be finding the inverse function for f of x, which can be expressed as f inverse of x. We usually use this notation. It doesn't mean 1 over f. It doesn't mean the reciprocal, but it just means the functional inverse. So what does that mean to find the inverse of a function? So we're kind of looking for a rule that will basically undo what is done with f of x. In other words, if y equals f of x, then f inverse switches x and y. So we can basically say that x can be written as f inverse of y. So in other words, we need to solve for x. Right, So we're given an equation like this, e to the power x over x, which we're going to set equal to y, because y equals f of x, and f of x is given as this. So our goal is going to be how to solve for x, right? How do you solve for x? But notice that when you solve for x, that gives you f inverse of y, which is f inverse expressed in terms of y. And if, at the end, you can change that variable to x so that you can express f inverse in terms of x. Make sense? Because that's what we're being asked. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So the million dollar question is, how do we extract x from here in this equation, right? So we do need a very special tool for that. So let's get to work. We're going to start with this equation e to the x divided by x equals y. And again, our goal is to solve for x. So for that purpose, I'm going to do the following. First of all, I'm going to switch sides here. Not switch sides, but I should probably put it differently. I want, to, I want the x to be in the numerator, not denominator. Make sense? So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x, like in other words, cross multiply. And then I want to go ahead and put the x and e to the x on the same side, so we can do it. You know what, it's, there's probably a better way to do it. Why don't we just flip both sides, right? That'll give us x over e to the x equals one over y. In other words, if two things are equal, then their reciprocals are also equal. The only exception to this is zero because zero does not have a reciprocal, as you know. But this gives us x in the numerator, which is really good, right? And then e to the x, because it's in the denominator, we can use negative exponents to express that. And this is basically the, the type of structure we're looking for. And let me tell you why. Because we're going to use a very special tool one more time. But before we do that, I kind of need to do a little bit of manipulation on this one. We have x here. Notice that we have x. And here we have negative x. You want them to be the same. So how do you make it possible? Multiply both sides by negative 1. Easy. So if you multiply both sides by negative 1, you get negative x. Multiply by e to the power negative x equals negative 1 over y. Great. Now, we're going to invoke, are you ready? We're going to invoke Lambert's w function. Uh-oh, what is that supposed to mean? Okay, let's do a quick review. Lambert's w function takes t e to the t as input and returns t as the output. So if you can think of a function that turns t into t to the t, which is also called the product log, by the way, there's another name for Lambert's W function, it's called product log, and if you're using Wolfram Alpha, you have to write it as one word, and in parentheses if you want to use a different branch, or just whatever your argument is, you can put it in there, and you can check it out. But that's the product log, because this is the product of t and e to the t, but from that, we're getting t, which is not a standard way of function. We, don't, we can't really find, express it uh, explicitly, but we just know that that function exists. By the way, the reason why there are two branches is because it's not one-to-one, -one, so we kind of have to, have to split it up into two sections, so it's invertible, Okay. And I've done some videos on Lambert's W function before, so you can go ahead and take a look at those problems too. But here's how Lambert's W works. And if we apply it here on both sides, we should be getting something nice. Let me show you how we can do that. Let's go ahead and 
move this to the right and then I'm going to go ahead and now apply W on both sides, a big W here and a big W here. And when I apply it on negative x e to the negative x, notice that in this case, t happens to be negative x. So when I apply numbers w, it's just going to give me one of these. So this will become negative x. And the right-hand side, unfortunately, cannot be expressed in a better way. So we have to stick to w of negative 1 over y. Okay, that's the only way to express it, basically. Great. Now, what do you do with that? Since, and always keep that in perspective, remember, we were supposed to solve for x, right? And we almost did. What do I mean by that? We have negative x. We can multiply both sides by negative 1. That will give us x equals negative w of negative 1 over y. A lot of negatives. By the way, these two negatives do not cancel. Don't ever make that mistake. Uh, they don't cancel out. You have to leave it there. Okay? Great. Now... Remember, when we solve for x from the expression y equals f of x, we try to isolate x. And remember, x was f inverse of y. So by solving for x, you're actually finding f inverse of y on the right-hand side. But most of the time, we do express inverse of a function using x as a variable. Of course, that doesn't make sense because if x is dependent variable for the inverse function, the dependent variable, I mean independent variable, if the independent variable is x for f, for f inverse, it is going to be uh, y. But since all functions pretty much are expressed in terms of x, that's why we do this conversion. But don't worry about the previous x, it's gone. Now we are replacing, I can probably just totally forget about this so you don't get confused. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace y with x on both sides. So again, one more time, let me switch sides so you can see better. Now, this is what I got as a result. And since I want to find f inverse of x, I'm replacing y with x on both sides. And that's totally legitimate. I can do that. So f inverse becomes negative w of negative 1 over x. And that is the math of magic, right? <laughs> okay, whatever you call it, but this is how you find the inverse function. So let's go ahead and check our results with Wolfram Alpha. Sometimes Wolfram Alpha cannot solve this, uh, you know, math problems because it's just a large language model, maybe a small language model, who knows, right? Not good enough, but anyways, it'll hopefully improve in the future. But let's go ahead and check our results and see what we get. What, what did we find? Negative W of negative 1 over X. And Wolfram Alpha, do you think you can find it? Think about it. Guess. And ta-da-da-da. Yes, it can actually solve this problem. Because this problem is fairly easy to do. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus B I. And bye-bye.